For its 18,990 pesos price tag, the Huawei Nova 5T is clearly one of the best, thanks to its close to flagship grade specs. And based on the few comparisons we did recently, we discovered that it can compete or beat a few phones with higher price tags. But now, we want to see how it fares against a handset with almost double the price. Hi, this is Peter of GizGuy.com and let's compare the Huawei Nova 5T with the Samsung Galaxy A80, a premium phone priced at 34,990 pesos. Let's do it! Build quality and design Both are well-machined devices with premium metal for the frame and glass at the back and in front. According to Corning's website, the Galaxy A80 has Gorilla Glass 6 behind and Gorilla Glass 3 in front. Meanwhile, Nova 5T has no mention of any glass protection, but fortunately, it is not that prone to scratches in real life. Both have no mention of water resistance. The difference between the two is the Galaxy A80 is bigger and curvier. Some may like that better, but I'm sure many will like the more compact design and finish of the Nova 5T. Why? Its 2.5D curved glass goes with a new type of holographic design in black, crush blue, and the jaw-dropping midsummer purple edition. In front, Nova 5T has a nice-looking 6.26-inch punch hole screen with an impressive 91.7% of screen-to-paddy ratio. The first for the price. However, I slightly prefer the all-screen 6.7-inch Super AMOLED panel of the Galaxy A80. It even has a taller 20 by 9 cinematic aspect ratio compared to the 19.5 by 9 of the Nova 5T. Both have slim bezels and familiar button placements. The difference is you will find the hidden dual SIM tray of the Nova 5T at left. On the A80, it is placed at the bottom near the USB-C port and the speaker. The volume keys of A80 is located on the left side of the phone. For the Nova 5T, the volume keys and power button that acts as a fingerprint reader are found on the right side. A80's fingerprint reader is found on its screen. Like other devices with glossy glass back designs, both are prone to fingerprint smudges and they are quite slippery at times. For protection against drops, we recommend putting a case. As mentioned, the 5T is easier to hold as it is smaller. Multimedia Experience Nova 5T's display is quite good and immersive. Nova 5T's pixel per inch is higher at 412 ppi thanks to its high screen to body ratio with no notch and to its neatly placed punch hole on the upper left side of the display. It also has a nice type of IPS panel with a crisp Full HD Plus resolution and a wide color gamut of 96% NTSC. But the display of Galaxy A80 is just bigger, taller, and a bit better. It is packed with an all-screen cinematic 20x9, 6.7-inch, 2.5D curved Super AMOLED screen with Full HD Plus 2400x1080 resolution at 393 pixels per inch. Even though the Nova 5T doesn't have an AMOLED panel, it is still great for binge watching because of its large screen with no notch. For audio, the Galaxy A80's downfiring speaker is louder, but it doesn't mean that it is automatically better. Nova 5T speaker is not that loud, but it is loud enough. Moreover, it doesn't have the hissing and distortion on the A80 speaker at maximum volume. For headphones, it is sad that both don't have a 3.5mm headphone slot anymore. But when you use a USB-C dongle, both can deliver rich tunes with crisp details. The bass response is not overwhelming and both are close to natural sounding using my favorite wired in-ear headphones. For calls, both did well. Both have a decent microphone that can let you talk clearly or even record your voice nicely. Overall, both are great for multimedia consumption. Cameras At the back, the Nova 5T has a total of 4 cameras. It is equipped with a 48MP f1.8 Sony IMX586 primary camera, 16MP f2.2 ultrawide camera, 2MP f2.4 4CM macro camera, and a 2MP f2.4 depth camera. On the other hand, Galaxy A80 has a triple camera setup with a 48MP f2.0 primary camera, 8MP f2.2 ultrawide camera, and a 3D depth camera. Image processing is expected to be better on the Nova 5D since it is using a previous generation flagship chipset, the 
Kiri 980. Both are packed with useful camera modes like AI scene detection, HDR, ultra wide, bokeh, and pro mode. But as expected, Nova 5T has more modes like the 2.5 CM macro, ultra wide night mode, more robust pro mode, and light painting modes. Here are the camera samples. In our first daylight shot, both delivered images with good colors and sharp details. Details on the Nova 5T shot is just a bit sharper and warmer, but dynamic range on the A80 is a bit better. The clouds on the A80 looks nicer as well. On the next daylight shot, 5T shot is social media ready and sharper, but it is a bit over processed compared to the A80 shot. For wide shots, I like the details on the 5T shot again. Dynamic range is wider too. Distortion is less as well. But the colors on the A80 is truer despite its distorted, very wide look. For zoom, Nova 5T has up to 10 times digital zoom while A80 has up to 8 times. Nova 5T's max zoom even has less noise. For portraits, the edge detection and bokeh effect is nicer and truer looking on the A80. Details are a bit sharper too. My skin tone just looks more natural on the Nova 5T. For macro shots, it is not even a match. The 5T with a dedicated macro sensor wins. Indoor shots are similar in detail, but this time, A80 is warmer. It could go either way. In low light, both have the ability to take respectable images in the dark. The performance is about the same to my eyes. 5T is just a bit sharper and brighter. Using the night mode, it is hardly a match. 5T has superior details, colors, and everything. The other sad thing, despite being a more expensive device, A80 doesn't have an ultra-wide night mode like the 5T. For selfies, Nova 5T highlights a 32MP f2.0 shooter with AI HDR. Meanwhile, the Galaxy A80, since it has a rotating camera, has the same cameras at the back for selfies. Both have HDR, beauty, and portrait modes. I just find it weird that A80 doesn't have filters and AR stickers. Moreover, you can't use the night mode for selfies. But it has one thing that the 5T doesn't have, an ultra-wide selfie mode. For daylight selfies with bokeh and face beauty, I'm surprised that the Nava 5T can match in terms of details. It even has the more natural colors. The edge detection on the A80 is slightly better though. In this indoor selfie shot without face beauty, both did okay with similar levels of sharpness. I just find the colors on the 5T to be warmer while A80 is truer. As mentioned, it has an ultra-wide mode that you can use for selfies. In low light, both did quite okay. I just like the HDR performance of the 5T a bit better here. In low light, the screen flash of both devices is respectable. But the winner here is the screen flash of Huawei as it got my skin tone correctly. Also, I find it weird that I can't use the dedicated flash of A80 for selfies. For videos, the two phones can record up to 4K 30fps. However, only the Nova 5T has a stabilized 4K video mode. Using the 1080p 60fps mode, you can now use the super steady mode on the A80 to match the stabilization of Huawei. But still, unlike the Huawei, you need to go down to 30fps to use the ultra wide angle video mode. For slow-mo, props to Huawei as 5T can do up to 720p 960fps. However, I just find the 720p 480fps of A80 to be a bit better as it looks smoother with less crop. For selfie videos, both can record up to 1080p but I prefer the selfie video of the A80 as it has the super steady mode and it has less crop. There is an option to activate the ultra-wide selfie video as well. Performance Inside, the Huawei Nova 5T is packed with a 7 nanometer base Kirin 980 chip clocked at 2.6 GHz paired with Mali G76 MP10 GPU. On the other hand, Galaxy A80 rocks an 8 nanometer base Snapdragon 730 chip clocked at 2.2 GHz paired with Adreno 618 GPU. Both loads with 8GB of RAM to let you enjoy multitasking and 1 to 8GB of ample storage. 
Easily, the faster between the two is the Kirin A80 chip. It is the same flagship grade chip found in the likes of Huawei P30 Pro and Mate 30 Pro. In fact, benchmark scores show that it is way faster than Snapdragon 730. Fortunately, A80 performs well in real life, but Nova 5T is simply the better and speedier all-around phone. As expected, Nova 5T is smoother for heavy gaming as well. For connectivity, no problem. Everything from Wi-Fi, 4G LTE, GSM, and calls works. Nova 5T has both the side-mounted fingerprint reader and the face unlock to unlock the phone. A80 goes with an in-display fingerprint reader. Despite its unusual right-side placement, the unlocking speed of Nova 5T is still faster. On the battery department, Nova 5T is powered by 3750 mAh of battery, while A80 has 3700 mAh. In our test, 5T proved to be the more battery-efficient phone, thanks to its 7 nanometer chip and a lot of optimizations. A80 also performed well, but not as good as 5T. The 25W charger of A80 is a bit higher than the 22.5W supercharge of 5T. Both can be fully charged in a little over an hour. For the UI, it's a matter of personal preference. Both run in the skin version of Android Pie OS. Both have a few bloats, but both are feature-rich and deeply integrated with Google Apps. We also like that they both have full-screen navigation modes. Of course, both have AI. Huawei has its high vision, Samsung uses Bixby. Our verdict, at 34,990 pesos, the Galaxy A80 is a beautifully designed Samsung phone with a massive screen to let you enjoy a lot of content. It also has rotating cameras designed to provide similar back and front shots, and the overall performance is respectable. However, for much less, the Huawei Nova 5D can compete or beat the Galaxy A80 in a lot of ways. For a phone priced at just 18,990 pesos, it has faster performance, slightly better battery life, and arguably nicer back cameras for photos and videos. Given that a more expensive phone had a very hard time against a much cheaper device, it is clear who won this comparison. For us, it is the Huawei Nova 5T. So, what do you guys think? Please let us know in the comment section. And thank you so much for watching. Again, this is Peter of USGuy.com and bye-bye.